Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with, as always, another 100% achievement guide, and this time we are getting it all in the very fascinating Welcome to Elk. Now this game was developed and published by Triple Topping Games and is available for £12.49 or £14.99 in the US. So we play as a woman called Frigg, who goes from city life to do a carpentry apprenticeship in a small town, namely Elk, obviously. Uh, but what starts off seeming normal and fine turns into dark, humorous, weird and wonderful stories told by all the citizens of Elk. It is a really great and planned out game with a fantastic story. Now it is another easy achievement list. A lot are story related in terms of bottles which read as stories appearing on your table after a certain part of the game. There are missable ones which can be easily missed for interacting with certain things as we progress, but of course don't worry, I'll, as always again, be letting you know when we arrive at them, and timestamps will be provided in the comments section below. So we are looking at roughly about one to two hours to get it done, which also, by the way, for the sake of this playthrough, I'm going to be smashing through the dialogue, but definitely it is worth having a good read as it is extremely interesting. So then, with all that being said, let us begin. So you can go ahead, look at options if you want, but there's not really a lot going on, just music and things. So have a look at this little bit of story here. This is one of the main characters of the game. Anders, var Sandham var død tre gange. Anders, han var født og opvokset på en vej, der hedder Pine Road, ude i skovene. Og derfor gik han ind til Elk hver dag. And here we are then, Act 1. So, now, like I said, our name, there she is on the left-hand side, talking about our ginger compadre. Our name is Frigg. Now, by the way, just keep pressing the A button to smash through the dialogue. But Frigg, there are two uh, definitions. Now, the first one being, uh, Frigg is the highest goddess in the ancient Norse pantheon and the wife of Odin, so that's very fantastic. Also, you move with the left stick, of course, so just follow this guy for now. And also, Frigg is... I think it depends where you're from. But Frigg is a, a, another word for masturbation. So, um, if you're... <laughs> obviously, if you're British, Friggin basically means to, you know, touch yourself. Hmm. So, it, it's both hilarious and incredible that it is also, like I said, the... Uh, highest goddess in the ancient ancient Norse pantheon. So take from that what you will. But anyway, uh, yeah, brilliant. Happy days. So I'm very sorry to have dragged it down already, but what we're going to be just doing then is following this guy, smashing through the dialogue as he shows you around town. Now, as you can see, it is a crap hole, but there's always one pub, which is always what you need in any type of crap hole town. No, it's not all like that crap hole though, honest. So we're going to head in, so press the A button to interact. And now with this bit, all we're going to do, you're just going to talk to everyone in the room. Or all the four little groups there. Oh yeah, frig me baby. And for some reason, in most games, you always get these sort of council estate type people. You know, the chick that's knocked up and the one that looks like he can stab you if he really wanted to. Hmm. Delicious. So, this is all we're doing. We're just getting to know all the characters for now. There's literally not a lot of characters to get to know. But, well, here we go. <clears throat> Hmm. 
So we are coming up to our first of quite a few mini-games in the game. This time we're just basically copying this uh, alcoholic, because uh, Sue here is an alcoholic at the top. Um, all we're doing is just copying her dance moves. And the way we do that is just press the uh, same button that she's doing. So it's going to tell you now uh, to press the A button or the Y button. So obviously the X button, which means she goes left. The B button means she goes right. Y, which means her arms go up. And then A is when she sort of crouches down. So easy enough to do, but do, literally do not worry if you get it wrong. If you end up getting it wrong, it'll just say wrong turn drink. You basically end up just getting more smashed, which is what we always want. Especially when we get to a new town and have a dance off with some random alcoholic we've never met before. Bring it on. It does get a little bit more difficult, but it's fine. Oh, wow, the town sex pest, the dickhole, the douchebag. There's always one in every town and it ruins it for everyone. Sadly, we can't shoot him just yet or at all. But anyway, there is a missable achievement that we're going to get. Now, you can only get this missable achievement at this point in the game. It is very early on, but it's obviously better to get it out of the way now. So as soon as you stop talking to Jean, old Jan, frig. Frignus Regis is going to spew. Now we need to do this again before we move on. And the way to do that, uh, you can press the Y button, by the way, to have a look at the map. It's hidden under my Welsh Hunter sign there, so apologies about that. It's not a very big map, of course. Now, what we need to do is hold the A, B and Y button, and then press the X button while holding. That's going to make us splurge again, and that will unlock the, look, shrimp achievement. So it's holding the A, B, and Y button at the same time, and then press the X button while holding all three. That'll make a spew. Uh, bits of chunky crap in there, but we are good to go. So obviously we are a bit steaming. Um, our house is basically at the top of the map there. Uh, she's gonna <laughs> she is going to spew a couple of times, but this is what you want. This is what you want within the first 10 minutes of a game. Being absolutely off your trolley, having a great old time. By the way, that's not me being a bit slow and special and going from side to side. That's actually her being drunk. That's what normally happens. The realism in this game is fantastic. <laughs> Buttykin. <laughs> 
that sounds like butt and that's hilarious to me so there is our house it's got the sort of blue sort of frame around it and the golden doorknob if you ever get lost and to be fair they've furnished it out quite well you know look at that it looks very cozy anyway what you need to do finish this bit by heading upstairs and going to bed and you know spewing on yourself you dirty git Nothing really special going on here. Just talk to everyone with the faces because you you are dreaming one hell of a dream right now So we're wondering what the hell that was about. But for now, we're going to play some decorations in our room. So you need to head by the table. This is a sort of automatic thing. So head by the sort of suitcase icon. And just interact with it by pressing the A button. Now, there's two options you can usually pick. So if you go left or right, you'll be able to pick one of the two options. The build a house, talk, eat, kiss, and die game, which definitely does not look like Grand Theft Auto or anything. Um, <laughs> Put the robot down if you want. It literally doesn't make a difference, whatever you decide to choose. <laughs> uh, head upstairs there, and we've got another two suitcase options. So you can have cat, cat with bread on head, which is hilarious in itself. But we're gonna go, we're gonna think of our mum, because nah, I love my mum. And uh, just pick whatever the hell you want here, and then we're gonna head outside. And they stock my fridge up as well. Oh, if only I could do that in real life. Anyway, now we're gonna start going down. We're gonna basically head back down to the pub we were at last night. So have a little <laughs> step in your spew if you really want. My solution is don't do that in real life because it gets all sticky and stiff. But sort of just um, like I said, there's only really one path that you can go down, so uh, you will get used to this sort of path very quickly. We'll be up and down and all around quite a lot. So there is the pub. We're going to head in there. We're going to have a little run around in our splurge. And we're going to head on inside. And we have three missable achievements here. So immediately go to the right and interact with the jukebox. And that one is Andreas's jukebox. Then go to the poster just up above where the jukebox was. And that's going to be Astrid's famous cowboy hot dog recipe. So that'll be the second out of three missable achievements in this little area. And then when we have a look, that does look nice for a cartoon dog. And then head to the pinball machine on the left hand side. And you have to interact with it at a certain point until they, uh, there's like a note with, Oh my god, a cute guy on it. <clears throat> hey baby. If I was that way inclined of course, but... I'm not, but he is a good looking lad, but that should be three out of three missable achievements now. <laughs> so anyway, obviously press Y to open the map, it'll always tell you where to go. So now we can head down. So go past this, I don't know, is that like a weird skull kind of statue thing? Have a dance around if you want. By the way, the, the way they run on this game is hilarious, generally looks constipated. Now I've run like that when I've constipated, so... Is that what they based it off? <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, still hilarious. So we're going to talk to Jan now and have a little bit more conversation with the sheriff.
Ah, well, what a nice guy. I tell you what, I wish my work was like that. Yeah, go on, have a look around town, have a nice day off. No, my work sadly hates me, so... Well, they can segment. So what we're going to do then is just head towards the arrow and head towards the top for now. So, uh, I genuinely thought it was the uh, sex-disgusting dickhole pest. We're going to call him douchehole for now, I think. But it was just this young little, well, old little harmless guy. And there's he at the very beginning, or he was at the very beginning of the game, of the cutscene where the guy was talking about Anders dying three times. So this appears to be Anders, and <laughs> that is supposed to say boutique, but it sounds more like buttock. So that is more funny to me because I am a child. <laughs> right, so just head on in towards the cave for now. And then this is Anders' cave. And he's got a big fluffy head, Benny. Happy little thing. Right, so, none of these mini-games you can fail on, by the way, but all you have to do is basically put two eyes, a nose, and a mouth there. I make the dad look more like Freddie Mercury for some reason, just because, well, Freddie Mercury's cute and he had a nice mustache. But again, literally, just do whatever you want on this bit. You've got to do the same for the mother as well, and I make her more look, kind of look like Madonna, you know, gat tooth and stiff. But anyway, as soon as you're done with that, just boop the seal, and... That will basically move it on to the next one. Ooh, <laughs> squeezy. And because that's not weird or creepy at all, but if it's what Anders wants, it's what Anders gets. So he's got Madonna for a mother, Freddie Mercury for a dad, he can't beat it. So when we regain control of Frignus Regis, have a look at the car. There is a photo frame on there before we leave, so make sure to interact with that. And that is going to get us the what a good doggy dog achievement. And then what we need to do then is just head all the way back down to the pub, following Anders. Now I'm going to race him. Race him! You don't get anything for it, but it's always fun. Ah, you douchebag, get in my way! So once we head inside, now just like we did at the first, we, we are, well we did dancing then, it's going to be a little bit of singing slash karaoke now. And once again this is just, you, you cannot fail this, all you need to do is just press a whole bunch of buttons in any particular order. Uh, Beth, who is the lady in the orange jacket, talking to our ginger friend, Yeppe. Uh, she's going to be singing with you, so you literally just press any sequence of buttons in any particular order. Best gonna copy you, you do that four or five times, and that's that mini game completo. Go for it, friggity doo da. I can do that. 
Nah, maybe not. Nah, screw that. Sorry, sorry. Well, I hope your ears recovered from my attempt at singing, trying to sing like these two. Uh, again, apologies about that. I was dreadful. So, um, um, Yeppy is, uh, so Beth is, um, Yeppy's a client, which makes Beth a, 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 the kind of prostitute at the island, maybe? I, t I don't know. I didn't want to say it, but that that's, that's what client means, right? Especially on OnlyFans these days. It's all about subscribers rather than clients these days, right, isn't it? Hmm? For the old uh, workers of the sexual kind. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're just going to be heading back home and taking a little nappy nap, ready for the day ahead. But enjoy the snow! So once we are awake, we're going to head back downstairs and we're basically now going to start getting the story related progression achievements for, as I said earlier on, for the bottles on the table. So somebody's breaking in our house by the, by the looks of things, but we need to actually read these two or at least open them up. Um, and then the achievement will unlock when we get out of the table. So open them both up, have a little read if you want. Again, definitely worth it because it all starts to make a lot more sense and it gets it gets quite emotional a little bit later on so you should now get these two achievements and what we're going to do is basically just head back down to the pub Again, enjoying the snow while it... Well, it's very common here anyway, but just head back down to the pub for now. And then, basically, Beth is going to be like, Emiki, where's Emiki? That, that's what I assume her voice would be like for some reason.
Right, so it's not too difficult to find it. Yeppy then, all we need to do is just follow these track marks and where they go is basically up. So just keep following the track marks until we find him. Ooh. Awkward. What I don't get is though, it's snowing as hell so you can't be going that fast. Somehow you manage to smash into a rock, completely mangle your tractor and you manage to die at about three miles per hour, I assume. Unless you had like a mega, you know, three litre turbo diesel engine in that tractor and you were slamming it around the place. Okay, sorry, I kind of find it hard to believe you died from it, but Yeppy is dead now. Looks like Beth is going to have to get a new client for her new OnlyFans. So what we need to do then, just put your hand over, press the A button, and then slowly close it. Yeppy's eyes. This is very morbid, <laughs> very morbid actually this part. With the hands, obviously just put them underneath his head. And then all you need to do is press the up button. Just keep walking forward until this little scene ends. It's, it, it's very morbid this bit. You're, you're looking at a dead body for Christ's sake. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, definitely makes you think, makes you think I don't want to die, for one. So even though we have just seen a dead body, held a dead body, and our mind is going at a million miles per hour when this was supposed to be an easy carpentry apprenticeship job, now apparently we've just got to go home and sleep it off. Alright, let's do that. But what we've just seen happen is now going to be told by an actual real life story. So interact with the guy that's in your house. He's not there to bum you, don't worry. Seriously, just listen to the story. It's it's insane. It's incredible. Det er mange år siden. Jeg var ung tømmer og havde taget arbejde op i en lille by langt nord herfra. Og jeg kan tydeligt huske, det var en mandag morgen, hvor min makker Jeppe og jeg vi mødtes som sædvanligt og tog vores lille ladbil ud til værkstedet, som var den sidste bygning ud mod Ødemarken. Og vi gjorde det, det er så vanligt. Om mandagen, der ryddede vi altid op på værkstederne og kørte affaldet over på dumpen, som jo egentlig bare er en losseplads, hvor man graver stort hul i jorden og smider alle affaldet ned og dækker det til igen. På vejen hjem er det så småt begyndt at blive lyst. Og da vi kører over broen på smeltevandshælden, så opdager Jeppe, som jo var langsynet, at øh, der var en bil, der var en lille bil, der var kørt ned af børnenes kælkebakke, og der lå en mand på jorden udenfor, eller i isen. Og vi skynder os at køre derhen, og vi var op ad bakken, vi tror, at ulykken lige er sket, og så vender vi manden om, og så får vi et chok, fordi at, øh, hans øjne, de er sådan krakaleret lidt som glas. Han har to sådan røde 
bugtænder ud af munden, fordi han har slået munden, og det har blødt. Det er så frosse, fordi det var meget koldt den nat. Det frøs 38 grader. Og samtidig var hans skjorte stod sådan åben, og han var rigtig dårligt klædt på. Og så vi rev noget af hans maveskin af, da vi vendte ham om. Det var simpelthen frosset fast i isen. Vi var meget chokeret og forskrækket, og Jeppe sagde, at han er, han er færdig, ham der, han er død. Øh, vi skyndte os at ringe efter en lægeambulance, og derefter satte vi os ind i kaffestuen i vores håndværkerbrak, som vi lå lige ved siden af, for lige at sunde os lidt. Ambulancen kom ret hurtigt efter, og lægen undersøgte manden, og de kørte væk med ham. Og lægen kommer så ind til os i kaffestuen og skiller os ud, fordi vi havde... Øh, vi ikke havde prøvet at øde førtihjælp til ham, og vi skulle med det samme undersøge, om han var lændestiv, fordi så kunne det være, at man kunne redde ham. Det er vi ikke noget om, og vi blev ked af, at vi måske havde svigtet en, som, som kunne reddes. Senere der ringede lægen dog så efter nogle timer til os og undskyldte. De havde undersøgt ham og undersøgt sagen, og det viser sig, at det var en person, som det var den sidste aften, han skulle være i byen, så ville han rejse derfra, han ville holde. Og, han har derfor været sammen med sine venner øh, om aftenen før og drukket temmelig meget alkohol. Alligevel var han kørt hjem i sin lille bil og kører op på, på sådan et plateau, hvor der er parkeringsplads. Man kommer til at køre for langt frem i sin brænder der og ruser ned af børnenes kælkebak, og bilen sætter sig fast. Og så går han ud af bilen og falder. Og på grund af den stærke kulde, dårlig påklædning og hans dårlige kondition, og hans meget høje alkoholprocent, så sagde lægen, der ville gå i 5-10 minutter, så ville han være bevidstløs, og kort efter ville han dø. Så vi kunne ikke have gjort noget af alle omstændigheder. Det er en historie, jeg engang imellem tænker på, også selvom man sidder her i dagens sommerdag, og så tænker på, at dengang, der var det altså 40 grader koldere end det, jeg sidder i nu. Så øh, ja... So you see the achievement unlock there for meeting Astrid's dad. Now Astrid was basically the main developer who worked on the game. And yeah, so as you can see then, a lot of events that happened in this game had happened to at least Astrid's dad in real life. Obviously there's more to come, we'll get through that when we get to it, but that's just unbelievable. So. I mean, have a look at these. These names are hilarious. Facebook, Instagram, MeTube, what's up? Snapchat, TikTok, Swapflight, Spaghetti, <laughs> Carpenter. Oh, look at that one at the bottom left there. Pony. <laughs> and it looks like a little phone and they called it Pony. That's hilarious. So anyway, um, we can't check anything. I'm not that stupid, by the way. Oh, what's that one? Miss Agnes. That <laughs> looks like messages. So... We can now go down, really pondering sort of what the hell happened. I don't know how you're supposed to get positive energy from high, uh, handling a dead body, but that's some good positivity, Frig, and I like it. So we're going to get a story-related achievement there, The Frozen Man. Again, you don't have to read it this time. Very worthwhile to read it, though, especially with the whole true story kind of thing there. But for now, we are once again just going to head back down to the Pabobini. My apologies, we're not actually heading to the pub yet. What we're doing is heading down to Jan's workshop, which is on the very, very le left, bo bottom left-hand side. So don't go left here because you come up to a dead end. You've got to keep going down there. So, well, that was stupid of me, wasn't it? And by the way, the music in this game as well, really chilled, but really, really awesome.
Why is the sex pest douchebag always there? Why don't you get pissed off, man? So anyway, we need to head over to Beth's house now after seeing her only client uh, sort of disintegrate into the snowy snowness. Again, that's a little bit awkward, but we need to just head past this sort of skull statue over the bridge. Now, this is one that sort of caught me out, as in, I thought, how the hell do I get there? And all you got to do then is interact with the sign. So we're going to see this is the grave uh, where Yeppy is. He is no longer with us. He's covered in rogues. I don't know how, again, I don't know how you're supposed to stay positive. But you're actually supposed to interact with the sign where it says Beth's place here. With the A button, of course. And that's how we get there. <laughs> but it took me about 10 minutes to figure that out for some reason. So we need to make a squirrel trap, so head on over to the wheelbarrow there and then, now there are plenty of ways you can do this, basically we need to just put the golf balls in the weight there, that's it. So what I would do is put this, um, well it looks like a kind of steer, a ship's steering wheel doesn't it, until the balls are falling down, so that's always a good start. And then what I do then is use the spring, the top right hand of the spring, just make sure that it's sort of Put it just underneath and to the right, obviously, of the steering wheel or the shit wheel or whatever. And make sure that bounces. Twice it doesn't matter as long as it bounces once. And then what we can do is then just put the bottom left sort of planks of wood, if you want. Just sort of underneath it and then just make it go all the way down to the weight until enough golf balls um, assemble there. And then we can then boop the seal of approval on the right hand side. Moving on, loving life. For yummy squirrels for dinner. Although it sucks if you've got to try and catch your own food if you are a vegan. Because you'll just be eating like snow and grassy leaves and stuff. Damn, Sue, you alcoholic son beach hiding balls in rocks. Hey, that's that's my girl. Well, I'm not really though. So once again, then we are just going to head to the Hermit Pub once again. And again, I have to say, the sort of somberness of the music really fits in so perfect with the scenes and everything. Music in this game, definitely a big, big plus. Ooh.
God damn, things getting a little heated here between Anders, who thinks he's a ghost, and Beth, who's just lost her only, only fans client. Oh man, she's get awkward. So what we need to do then is basically pour a couple of beers. Now, this mini game is supposed to be you pu push the left stick up or down to move the glass, and obviously you've got to copy it exactly as it is in the picture on the right there. But what you can do is just keep hold of the A button, pouring out all the froth until it then looks like the, like I said, the sort of dream bubble picture on the right. As soon as you do that, press the B button to deliver, and that's it. So it's just made that mini game, which was easy anyway, but it's just made it a hell of a lot easier. So just keep pressing the A button until you get the right amount of froth, which is on the right hand side. Job done. A lot of wastage though, which really pisses me off. So after a bit more of an awkward night, we can now basically just go home. We've had a few drinks. By the way, this whole town is basically just full of alcoholics. Not a lot else to do though, I suppose. But head home, take a nap, and we're going to do that little dream sequence again where we talk to Andorino. Thank you, Tom, for liking my achievement. Appreciate that, buddy. But we are going to end this little sequence. We're going to head downstairs, and the next story-related bottle achievement will unlock. And these dreams are getting weird, hon. I normally just have, like, wet dreams, where I accidentally pee the bed. <laughs> it's the wrong kind of wet dream. So now once again we can head out of our house, start heading down, and then Jan, our carpentry master, who we haven't actually done any carpentrying in yet, but he's going to intercept us and we're basically going to go to Mr. Bo's house, which if you don't know, he's the guy in the red top, the kind of horse looking guy, I suppose, it looks a bit weird, but we'll, we'll soon see. And we're also going to learn the backstory of Mr. Bow and how he came to be.
So to summarise, rich dad, massive jerk off, hated his wife and kids, wife left to have a better life, no doubt. And Mr. Bo basically got everything when his dad died. Happy days! So, what we need to do, there is a missable achievement in this area, there is nothing too difficult about it, all we need to do is interact with the car, and that will get the uh, missable achievement. Um, blah, blah, blah. Anna Louise's car, Marina. So, you don't have to keep people with it, I'm just, again, once again, being a child. Because why the hell not? <laughs> but yes, so this that is how Mr. Bo has come to be. His dad was a jerk-off. Plenty of those about. Now we're going to head in. And basically what Mr. Bo is going to do is offer us to play a little bit of mini-golf. Uh, it's not just mini-golf though. This gets weird. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So, here we go then. So some of these can be uh, tricky, but again, you cannot fail it, so do not worry. You just press the, obviously, left stick to move it, and you can press the A button to smash the, the um, ball. So that's what I do. I just done full power all the time. Usually it goes in. If it takes a couple of times, again, do not worry at all. So this is where it starts getting a bit tricky. So you think, what the hell? The flag breaks. We need to actually move the flag to the ball, which is just extremely weird and there's a hot dog on the course who's leaving food about it's waste and beer and I like it again we don't actually have to put all the balls in this time we're just gonna be putting uh, around four or five balls I think or two or three whatever again this time we are gonna get a hole in one <laughs> I actually got lucky with that you don't have to um, this time once again we're just getting the ball in the hole Again, does not matter how many times it, uh, how many tries it takes. We, for some reason, just keep getting ultimate, ultimate, and loads of balls. This one actually tricked me out big time. I thought I had to put all the balls in the hole, and all we actually have to do is put the beer to the flag. So just aim straight, put the beer into the flag right there, and that is how you end this bit. So we started taking the ages. I couldn't actually get to the three balls up there, so I was starting to get annoyed. So instead, I just done that and it worked and then that really annoyed me. <laughs> and now for some reason we've got a bowling ball as well. Man, Mr. Bow really is off his nut. So, very calmly put the bowling ball somehow in the smaller hole. <laughs> that means two things. And just keep putting your balls in the hole. I, I, I promise he will appreciate it. Everyone appreciates your, a ball in their hole depending on who you are, of course. But that is the end of the weird mini golf slash bowling mini golf section. But once again, we are coming up to a couple of missable achievements. So first things first, go to the right, interact with his painting, and that is going to be the first missable achievement. And that is the uh, Murray's poster. So from here, what we can do is head down and to the left, and we're going to interact with the gramophone next. That will get us Dennis's record achievement. And then from here, we're going to go to the right. We're going to head up the stairs. And it, it kind of looks like, if anyone remembers, the unknown Pokemon from uh, Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Well, interact with it. It's called an unglet or an inglet. But it generally look, just looks like the I's and O's unknown Pokemon all sort of stitched together. So that is basically it now for this area. All we got to do is down the stairs, head all the way to the left into the kitchen and we're going to interact with the cupboard until we hear the voices which are at the top of the door right there so we interact with the cupboard first then we can hear the voices and then frig's going to be like bruh i am losing my shitting brain right here and it's so cool if we put frig in a situation where she has to carry uh, yep, and we knew that in a beautiful but Frigg is able to reflect upon Yebe as a person, I think that could be... But maybe that's actually pretty good because I think that 
like carrying also gives us some kind of uh, perspective that that's good. Like because in this, the way I understand the story is like the company finds they find the uh, Yebe, they're frozen and they look down. So once again then, after all that's done, what we're going to do is just head home. Have a little beep if you want. But interact with the village sign, and then just head home, take a little dirt nap. Once again, when we're going to head downstairs, we're going to get the next uh, story-related progression, which was Meet Mr. Bow. So that'll be the achievement we unlock next. And then, once again, what we can do from here, again, you can read it if you want to, you don't have to, but like I said, it's definitely always worth a read because there's so much depth to this story. It's very, 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 very good. It's fantastic. So, once again, what we're doing is heading all the way down to Jan's workshop. So, that's where you go in. Again, press the white button to open the map if needed. <laughs> but he can. But. And nothing else to do here except follow your broskies and your hoskies right up to Anders Cave.
I know this is a sad, somber moment, but I really love that he's kept the Freddie Mercury and Madonna-ish kind of balloon things looking like his parents still up. But what we need to do now is basically, well, you don't have to. So there's going to be three options for us. You either hit it with a stick, um, stamp on its neck, or twist its neck, or you can actually refuse. Doing anything makes no difference to the game. It literally is just a little bit of dialogue choosing options, that's all. Different dialogue options, I should have said earlier, sorry. So, again, if you choose to stand on the neck, it, re it doesn't do anything. But, like I said, you can refuse. But I am an inhumane son of a bitch, and I'm so sorry, Columban. I'm so sorry. By the way, I don't hurt animals in real life, just in case anyone thinks that I am an inhumane sick mofo. Okay? But, like I said, the only difference is... You get a bit of different dialogue here, that's it. So again, once we are done in here, we're going to head back down to the Hermit Pub. <sighs> For a little interaction, if you will. Douche hole. Well, thanks for sticking up for me there, Victor. But those two guys need their absolute ball sacks chopped off. Both of them, gone. And why not half of the penis as well? Because anyone who acts like that deserves their penis chopped off. I don't care who you are, don't act like that. Because you deserve your dick chopped. So, here is another in incredible interesting story again. So, buckle up. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So then, that was Astrid's mum. Of course, we've already spoken to her dad, and Astrid's mum had a story. And really, I mean, it makes it makes you think. It doesn't matter who you are. There's all. There's always going to be an absolute bunch of just absolute tards and turd brain mother biatches that think they that they can get away with it. And luckily for Astrid's mum there, she was in the company of a friend who, well, they all shit themselves, which is good, after he slammed his fist on the table. But it does, this game, it gets emotional, it d does actually make you think. It's incredible. But now we are going to move on with the game. There is one more story to tell, and we're going to come to that again, obviously just a little bit later on. But now we are on to Act 3, we've got to go downstairs now, things are definitely getting weirder. Uh, but we're not really too far from the game, we're about half an hour away now from the game's end. Maybe a little bit more, but we now get the story achievement for Killing Clumbin. Which again, it's just getting more somber the, the more it goes on. Gee, must meist. So, a few little things to do then, we're going to head to the graveyard first, which is down and just over the bridge, just before we get to the uh, Beth's, Beth's House sign. So, head there first, there's going to be a little note we're going to look at. Try not to be too depressed at this point, by the way. It, it does get a bit happier, honestly. So we're going to head down there, and as you can see, there's something sticking out of the rocks, and look at that! Amazingly... <laughs> it's an old game, boy! Yeah, That's clever, that's clever, and I like it. Uh, but we are going to be coming up to a missable achievement, now this one is easily missed. So for now we're going to head directly to the right, as soon as we get over to the bridge. We're going to head up, and we're going to see a little poster on this plank of wood. Interact with this just by the smashed window, and that is Mickle's noise comb flyer. So that one is very easily missed, so make sure to be grabbing that then before we head up. Heh, <laughs> but dick. Uh, before we head back up to Mr. Bo's mansions, so that's where we're going next. So head down to the left all the way up, and get your ass to that party, girl. Well, funeral party, close enough. So first thing we're going to do is interact with these on the left, Jan, Beth and the Sheriff. She's the worst Sheriff I've ever known by the way, even worse than 
Officer Bar Brady from The Simpsons. Uh, oh, the Simpsons, Christ. Officer Bar Brady from South Park, even. Uh, but again, just smash through the dialogue. Again, we're going to be playing just two small, short mini games. Attention there. Not sexual either. Which is a shame. So, interact with these guys. And basically, we're going to be playing like a little card game now. Uh, 21. 21 is called is the card game if you uh, I believe just British I don't know if that's a thing anywhere else but basically you've got it you've got a couple of cards and obviously you've got to make sure that you don't go over 21 but only this time it's 10 so as you can see there you got little numbers at the top there four 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 and three so if you put a four card down obviously four is going to be added to the total whoever is the Whoever's got the card that goes over the total of 10 loses a life. So it's basically as easy as that. Again, you can lose on purpose if you want. You can try to win. Again, makes not a lick of difference in terms of achievements. Just a little bit of dialogue differentiating. So yeah, I did try to win that, but um, well, I got fudged up, so that was worth a shot. Um, yeah, you can't beat it, you can't beat it. So head over to the left now, where Anders and Beth's little kid are playing. And basically what she wants you to do is build a house. Build a house, any house. I build a little house, but really I think you can just chuck a couple of blocks down and then boop the seal of approval, and that's fine. Um, I only spend about <laughs> maybe less than a minute or so on it. Um, so you can do what you want. Again, you can copy me. You can do what you want. You can just check a couple of brick down and, a, and an open sign. And then just press the seal of approval. There's, there's, again, you don't have to do anything specific or anything specific. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was fun. Thanks. I had a good time playing Dali's with you, girl. Uh, now we're going to head up and just talk to Mr. Bo and Marge. Now, there's only one Marge, and her hair is tall and blue. I can't imagine any other Marge in the place. Then, when this is done, head down, go back to Jan, Beth, and the Sheriff here. You can, you can shove it up your ass, girl. And uh, basically, we're just going to have a chat with the Sheriff in the toilet. No friggin' going on there. <laughs> hey, I made it. I made the joke.
So what Clara wants me to do then is her job. God damn it, you're the worst sheriff in the whole friggin' place. <laughs> friggin'. So, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, they like you, they listen to you. But I'm not the sheriff, bro. I don't get paid. I don't get paid enough to be a freaking sheriff here. You right? But who? I'm just apparently supposed to be a carpenter. But we're going to head home. We're going to go back upstairs, go to bed, and the little dream sequence is going to begin again. When we wake up, we'll go downstairs and unlock the next achievement, which is going to be out of beer, out of here. And this time, we are going to be going fishing, which, after all the deadness that's going on a couple of day, uh, the last couple of days, ah, a bit of fishing hits the spot, doesn't it? Uh, so we're just going to follow Beth for the time being, then we're going to go out again. There'll be another couple of missable achievements on this island, or at least one, sorry, that we are going to be grabbing. So again, smash through the dialogue, get to the next island. And obviously we'll be doing a mini game, but for some reason, uh, these people who've been here all their lives are no good. So they ask the new girl who's been there four or five days to do it for them. You lazy ass bitches. So just uh, hold the A button to drag it as far as you can, and then press the A button again to reel it in. So it's that easy. So just go as, so as far as you can, and it'll automatically grab onto the beer bottle. Don't worry about trying to catch the fish or anything, because uh, they actually just escape so they don't want to be eaten today which is a damn shame really because girl I'm hungry so as soon as you get four beer bottles there literally doesn't matter whichever ones they are then we are good to go to the next island by the way Sue's face between her alcohol dependency and whatever the hell she's doing with her mouth that sort of pout no, no pout lips are bad okay pouting is bad she, she's just got the most, I want to throw a brick in your faceable, faceable, that I've ever seen. Stop pouting. So, you can dingling this bell if you want. I like dingling in my dingling, so that's that was just for nothing. But there's Sue. Go to the right of Sue. Head up, and you can just see this uh, little rubber ring behind a tree. We need to make sure to interact with that. And that will get the I Can't Swim achievement. So make sure to interact with that before you interact with everything else on the island. Again, I'm not sure if you have to I, I, interact with things to progress the story, but it's what I do anyway. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have to anyway. Um, but again, just make sure to get the rubber ring, interact with that to get the achievement first. And then we'll be doing another little mini game because Sue is stupid. Uh, 
and got her head caved in by an actual elk. Luckily she's alive and we need to do a little bit of stitching. By the way, Beth, I can see a little clumps of semen there in your spear. What the hell have you been drinking, huh? Where Yappy was alive. God damn, I don't want to know. So this is another easy minute game. You, you can't go wrong, you don't go wrong. You can do it in any order, you can do it what you want. You press the A button at the bottom of the cut, of the little gash, and you can literally go as far or as small as you absolutely want, and then after about seven or eight sort of goes, uh, the game will automatically just move on. You cannot get it wrong. Promise. Let's go home. God damn it, Siri, you're a friggin' liability. Just had a head caved in by an elk and decides to go swimming because she hasn't got no beer. Honey, girl, you need some goddamn help. Anyway, what we're gonna do is head home again and be like, Sue, you goddamn stupid. <laughs> Get it? Stupid? Anyway, do not head home just yet. Very important, do not head home and go up into your bed. Instead, we're going to go down. We're going to get a missable achievement first. So head down. And we're going to go down, down, down. We're going to head to the right. Past this flagpole and this slide. Well, you can put it up if you want. It's just a llama. We're going to go up. Not across the bridge. We're going to go up and we're going to see... I don't know, if we keep going up, we're going to see, uh, right by Anna's cave, like this little green alien type thing. There it is. So, interact with this piece of, I don't know, side sparker, yeah, why not? That Because that is a miserable achievement that, again, you can only get now, I believe. So, if you try coming back here later, it won't actually be there. So, make sure to grab this before you interact with your bed. You can head you can head into your home as long as you don't interact with the bed then you should be okay. But then just to mess with us when we do get home we're going to get the story related progression when a moose socks walks on we're going to get that one now. So again you can read that again highly advise that you do but you don't have to, uh, you don't have to at all. But this time we are gonna be heading up to bed. So we are waking up again, and this time you're really thinking, bro, what the hell is going on? And that is what we're going to do. So we're going to go to Anders now. Also, this piece of music again just oh, fits the game and the narrative perfectly. Perfectly. Seriously, bravo on the music. But head up to Anders, and we're going to have a little discussione. Again, obviously, if you want to know where it is, get your map out. Get your map out for the lads. Wait!
So you should be at the minute on 22 out of 25 achievements. I just have a little quick look there. There really, as long as you've been following along, there shouldn't be any that you've missed at all. And this time we're going to follow Anders and his happy little face back down to Ye Old Hermit Pub. So now we get to moderately play as Beth, uh, and this is not a good reason either. Uh, so what you need to do then is, I'm pretty sure you can just interact with your daughter or, and then interact with the washing clothesline. You don't have to interact with the snowmobile or the uh, gramophone. I think you just talk to your daughter and the story progresses. Huh, <laughs> beard smells like piss. Uh, by the way, this guy, did go to prison, and it's what he gets for trying to impersonate a really bad Scooby-Doo character, and you know exactly which one I'm on about. So this is holy crapping sad as hell, and so our oh, husband knows he's gonna die. So once again, just like the first thing in section, you can just press any sequence of buttons. Doesn't matter as long as fast or slow as you want. I try going with the music because I I'm like that, and I love love music, so I like all that. But you do what you want, honestly. It's absolutely fine for the most heartbreaking moment of the game. Ridiculously sad. Ridiculous. This genuinely is the daughter holding her daddy's hand as he gets shot in the head. That, pfft, honestly, genuinely, now that I've got a daughter, genuinely teared up a little. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. For all the crap I talk and stuff, that, that really hit me hard. So, yeah, good job to everyone who worked on this game. Thanks for that. It's just that holding the daughter, holding the dad's hand there. Woof. Woof. <laughs> anyway, we must move on. We are about 10 minutes now from the game's end. Let's think happy thoughts. Let's get our buns out of here. Now, we're just going to go down and talk to Beth once again there for a minute. So what we're going to do now is hold hands and see another stranger outside who's going to tell us another story. And this once again, well, you'll see. Let me tell you how George died. 
George, han var, øh, han dyrkede has op i nogle skove på nogle bjergesider. Øh, for at forsørge hans øh, kone og hans datter. Og så en dag, så havde øh, politiet spottet ham på en helikopteroverflyvning. Og han blev øh, stillet for en dommer og dømt til flere år i fængsel. Og mens han var i fængsel, der gjorde han nogle tjenester for nogle... Øh, for en motorcykelbande for at få beskyttelse inde i fængslet, mens han var der. Men øh, en dag kom, hvor han blev fri, og han tog hjem til hans kone og datter og levede en, øh, en stille, lidt fattig tilværelse øh, med dem i noget tid efter, han var blevet løsladt. Øh, men så en dag, der kunne naboerne høre, at der var motorcykelstøj på de små veje, igennem skoven op ad bjergsiderne. På motorcykelstøjen, den stoppede inde ved Georges hus. Og der havde motorcykelbanden gået ind i huset og taget George og hans kone og hans datter ud på gårdspladsen. De havde bundet dem til nogle pæle, der stod ved deres veranda. Og uden videre taget en shotgun op til hovedet af George og skudt hovedet af ham. Og så var de kørt igen. Imens så hang Georges krop livløs fra hans pæle mens at moren og datteren stod bundet, øh, efterladt på gårdspladsen. Jeg mødte øh, enken og datteren øh, på en bar en sen aftentime, hvor øh, datteren, der nu var en voksen kvinde, øh, var med ude hendes mor i byen. Og, øh, og sidst jeg fik jeg taget mig mod til at, for at spørge dem, om den historie, jeg havde hørt, den var, var sand. Og moren hun genfortalte øh, historien, Øh, nogenlunde, som jeg havde hørt den. Og da hun var færdig, så sad datteren og, og stirrede lidt tomt ud i luften foran sig, efter hun sagde, at uh, The day daddy die, I never forget. For the love that is all crap and holy, that was apparently based on a true story. So all the three sort of major incidents that we've seen, uh, by the way, we're just going to head home, head up to bed. So, incredibly, for the, the three incidents that we've seen, which you just think, well, it's very clever writing, apparently has happened in real life. And that is just, that last one there was a, uh, woo God damn, couldn't even imagine it. So, Anders is off. He's going to the uh, second afterlife, or the second afterlife he believes is around. So just a few short minutes left of the game, the shortest act of the game, um, quite sad for Anders actually, he's got such a, such a innocent yet small brain. So Bobby's obituary, so our barmaid has just not come home. So she went on holiday, didn't come home, it's probably because her missus is an alcoholic and she does that stupid pouty thing which I don't get, constantly, you do it in pictures, that's fine. But she does it constant, so I can kind of see why she didn't come home. No, I'm just jo joking. I actually read this one. Um, it turns out her brother died 20 years ago. So people just assume that she either just left and never came back or actually did die. Which, again, it's very sad. Did I say it gets happier earlier on? Yeah, sorry, I lied about that. Yeah, it doesn't. It just got worse. She got more emotional. So we're going to keep heading down. We're just going to have a little chat with Pouty Mc alcoholic face right here now we are going to head to the pub we are so close to finishing now
Ah, so it does get a little bit happier. Uh, to be honest, the only disappointment I had with that little particular ending there was, by the way, where we're heading now is straight up to Anders Cave, so run up there. Uh, but I was a bit disappointed that uh, Sex Pest Douchebag just got arrested. I was hoping we could have stuck a, uh, stuck a rock to his head or something, or, you know, thrown him in the freezing sea. But at least he's out of our life. And Bobby came back. Well, thanks for worrying, everyone. Jesus. And maybe the alcoholic can be less alcoholic you now. So anyway, to be fair, he didn't take his parents with him. He still left Madonna and Freddie Mercury right there. Um, but all we need to do now is we're going to have a little chat with Jan. And all we need to do now is just head all the way down to the docks where we began the game. So everyone's going to be out and be all like, ah, oh, hey. And then you realise just how many, uh, just how little people there are in this game. Especially the ones that are left after dying and being arrested for murder and things. So head all the way down. Um, there's literally only one path that you can go now. Everyone else is basically blocking the way. And this is basically the end of the game, so there's Anders, you walk through the door, enjoy the ending cutscene and you should unlock the last achievement which then should be 25 out of 25 and that, uh, excuse me, is the end of the game. So I'm going to end it here then guys, you can watch this bit in peace but I just want to say thank you so so much for uh, watching the guide, I hope you enjoyed the guide, I hope you enjoyed the game as well, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It, the st it just com the story was so brilliant and absolutely excellent and I really just enjoyed it all 
Um, but again, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend if it did help. Uh, don't forget to check me out on all my socials, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Patreon as well. Be uh, happy to see you on all of them. But that's it then, guys and gals. So, once again, thanks so, so much for watching. I shall see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love. And again, a big, big shout out to Triple Topping Games for this brilliant game and hope to see another couple in the future. Also, big shout out to all my Patreon supporters, especially Tim, uh, Tim G84. Seriously appreciate the support. <laughs>